talking to Melissa Gilbert. She's invited me to her home. Uh, let's see. Well, right now, I, I'm a, I usually have a lot of projects going on, but right now the main project I'm working on is Reno Food Systems. I'm on the board, and we have a farm on the corner of Mayberry and McCarran, and we work with the county. We're on county property, and we have a five-acre farm. So I have various roles with them. I feed the farmers in the, in the summertime. Farmers don't just pick the food out of the ground and eat it. You have to bring them food. Farmers do not feed themselves. They work morning. They work really long hours. And I noticed that they were not taking care of themselves. So one thing I, I, I'm not. Like we were going to die in the field. (laughs) Pretty much. They were getting headaches. They weren't eating because they were so busy. You know, like that's one of the things that they had noticed was that they weren't actually eating the food that they were growing because they were just, they're just hardworking women. And so I thought, well, that's something I can do. I'm not a farmer, but I can like get some food. I get veggies from them and then I make them dinner every Sunday. And then I also have the Be Friendly Reno Project. That is my my main uh, love right now is trying to help protect bee habitat and educate people on the dangers of pesticides and how wonderful it is to plant pollinator plants instead of having a lawn. So our signs say, be friendly Reno, take the pledge. So we have a pledge that basically is that you'll leave water out for bees. That's something really simple that people can do. Bees do drown. So when you create a, um, a bee fountain, you want it to kind of have rocks on it so they can land on the rocks and then drink the water. It's, you know. Um, and then also not to use pesticides, to plant uh, bee-friendly plants, to not buy plants that are grown with neonicotinoids, which is something that a lot of people don't know. They're, they want to support the bees, but then they buy these plants that are grown, grown with neonicotinoids that then it affects the fertility of the bees. So mm. the pledge is, our, we're trying, and then to also talk to your neighbors about, um, about the, be- the, the joys of having a pollinator yard. One of the, the reasons behind the campaign was that pollinator yards look a little different. They don't look like your traditional lawn. So by creating the sign, I wanted to create not only solidarity with people who are doing this, but also to educate their neighbors to why their yards don't look the way that other yards do. All right, you ready? Yeah. Ready. (laughs) I've got my outfit on. (laughs) Okay. don't like grass do they they don't really like grass they like flowers they do like clover though so you can still have a beautiful lawn but if you plant it with clover or with yarrow that also and then to let your dandelions grow dandelions when we started the campaign it was we were a a pro pollinator pro dandelion campaign because there is this prejudice in our culture against dandelions and the reality is is that they're the first thing that blooms and they provide um, a lot of bee habitat. So one of the pledge one of the pledge that I forgot is that you don't mow your lawn as often. So instead of mowing your lawn every week if you mow it every 2 to 3 weeks, it allows some of those things to grow like the dandelions and so that provides habitat. Actually has a huge impact. Oh, you've convinced me. Good. <laughs> Yeah. Dun, da, da, da.